Hello and welcome everyone. Today we're going to be focusing on an infinite banking case study on a young adult, 17 year old male turning 18 in 2022. For full transparency, this is not a in force policy just yet. We are in the building stages, the planning stages. And so I thought it'd be great for me to share with you that process, the numbers, how we come up with the numbers, and really the strategy behind uh, putting cash value life insurance policies on your heirs, on your children, while they're young, while they're healthy, right? It's a very unique way to save your money tax-free, grow your money tax-free, use it tax-free in a location where the costs of insurance are drastically uh, less compared to say, maybe you're in your 60s, right? Later 60s, 50s, maybe, you're, maybe you are maybe don't have the best health. Uh, maybe you're someone that just doesn't qualify for infinite banking in terms of the concept itself, the whole life insurance contract, maybe your health is not right. So you're looking at an alternative option and looking at younger folks in your family that you can potentially put an insurance policy on where you are the insurer, right? You're the policy holder, right? I should say that's the correct term. You're the policy holder and you're the policy owner. And then your heir, son or daughter is the insured, right? So if anything were to happen to them, that's the only time a death benefits paid out. Now, while you retain ownership over the policy, you have access to the living benefit which is the cash value, which is the thing you most care about, because that's the money that you're going to want to be using today while you're living to grow that financial portfolio, build tax free wealth, generational wealth, invest in real estate, build your business, finance some tools, some equipments, whatever it is that you want to do, uh, infinite banking can help facilitate that. So let's take a look at the board and see what we have. Here we have a 17 year old male, like I mentioned earlier, company that we're looking at is Mass Mutual. We're also looking at Guardian, but for this study, I'm just showing you the numbers for Mass Mutual. Um, the parent that I'm working with, dad, uh, wanted to know what was the most amount of money that he could pay into a policy for his son. And this is based off of his uh, death benefit that he has. All right, so he has a little over a half a million dollars in death benefit currently. When we're dealing with um, children under the age of 18, I think that's classified as juvenile. And so you're able to get up to, I believe, 50%, which is probably with every insurance company, might be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, but up to 50% of mom or dad's death benefit right so ideally you would want to go with whoever has more death benefit in this case i'm just working with dad wants to put a policy on his son and he wants to know what's the most amount of money i could pay in so we already discussed what he can do right so he is looking to fund about three thousand dollars a year that's what he can do right now according to his uh, current financial situation but he would like the ability to put as much as the insurance company would allow according to the amount of death benefit that he has, right? So the current death benefit that we're looking at with Mass Mutual in particular was $278,695. So for that amount of death benefit, the most amount of money that we could max fund according to the MEC limits was $7,250 per year. And he is looking to only fund it for about 10 to 14 years. So there's a bunch of other illustrations that um, I had my team over at IBC Global produce for me. So I'm just showing you the highest number that we were looking at, about 14 years that he would like to personally fund it for, right? Now, when the time comes when he transfers ownership from himself to his son, when he feels comfortable, the son can continue to pay into the policy. But after 14 years, technically speaking, the policy is fully paid up, right? And son can just have a ever increasing tax-free line of credit that he can pull from to self-finance things in his business, equipment, investments, things like that, which would be pretty really really awesome head start, you know, compared to many other people that 
don't get to experience this type of a strategy. So the fact that you're here, you're watching this, you're learning, you're taking those steps to further your goals financially and also thinking about your kids to give them an even better head start in in the world, in their financial goals, et cetera, et cetera. So with that, he wanted to know what was the max amount that he could pay in for the least amount of cost of insurance, okay? So at Mass Mutual, that death benefit, we were able to bring it down all the way down to about 826 bucks, okay? So he is in the 14 years, the minimum amount of money that he would have to pay into the policy each and every year would be that base premium, plus there's a PUA expense, paid up additions expense, as well as a term rider, right? Those are the three things um, that factor into your cost of insurance. Those are things that you want to keep in place where if you were in a situation where you couldn't pay in the max amount of money that you originally set out to do, the minimum would be the base premium, that PUA expense, that rider, the PUA rider, and the term rider, okay? That gives you or uh, that retains the ability for you to max fund the policy or even catch up in a later year when you finally do come up with the money, okay? So in this case, he knows that he can do three grand a year, minimum base premium, 826 bucks, and then there's a couple more dollars for a term rider and a PUA expense. So maybe like, say 1,200 or $1,500, maybe even less than that, would be like minimum amount. But he knows he can do three with his eyes closed, and he has the ability to max fund it up to 7,250 a year. So let's just say that's what he did year over year. He's able to get that max fund amount in 7,250. That's the most amount of money I can pay into the policy each and every year for 14 years, right? So if that were to occur day one, the net cash value guaranteed would be a starting at the end of the year, end of the first year would be $6,455. The non guarantees show 6,562. The break even point, which simply means the amount of principal dollars I paid in by year seven, I'll have that amount plus a little bit more in cash value available to use, right? The MEC limit, modified endowment contract limit is $7,577.43. So there's a little extra MEC space built in there right for protection overall to not cause a mech in the policy itself um, and although we're designing it for 14 years he can continue to fund it for a longer period of time if he so pleases but we're simply looking at how can we maximize our funding amount for the time period for the least amount of costs according to the the death benefit allowed based on his death benefit right that 50 percent so the total funding amount, right? This is what I like to uh, share when I'm working with clients is, okay, you wanna be able to save a certain amount of money each and every year, which is great. Um, and you wanna do that for X amount of years. What we need to look at with cash value uh, life insurance is what is the most amount of money that this particular life insurance policy will allow me to fund. Once you know that number, you compare it to the total amount of money that you want to be able to fund every single year, right? So a, say a improperly designed policy would be, say, for example, you want to pay in $100,000 into a policy for 10 years. That's a million dollars, right? But then you receive an illustration of you paying in 80 grand, 90 grand, like less, right? Or maybe it's a hundred thousand dollars for the first seven years and then for the last three years it reduces to the base premium well that doesn't make sense because it won't hit the main goal you're trying to reach so you want to make sure that you're asking yourself how much money do i want to fund personally how much do i want to fund per year in a life insurance policy how much would i like the ability to fund in a life insurance policy and for how long match those three things up talk with your agent agent produces a policy for you a couple different illustrations you look at the mech limit you look at what the max funding amount is if your number is a million dollars then that's what the policy should be able to fund within that time period that you are are setting for yourself now the opposite um, could also be ineffective 
What I mean by that is the first example talked about you wanting to pay in a million dollars, but the policy only allows you to get in 900,000. So that obviously didn't meet your goals. But what if it's the other way around? You set out to fund a million dollars over a 10 year period, but you have the ability to pay in double the amount, $2 million. Well, the issue with that is if you're designing a policy, you receive, a, you receive a policy design where now you can pay in up to $2 million, understand that you're also paying for the insurance expense to do that. So it's only a bad thing if you don't know and you only set out to do that million dollar number. Well, now you're paying unnecessary costs because you were never gonna get to the two million anyways, you didn't set the goal to do that. So if you just say, um, if, a, if an agent tells you, well, you know, you should fund these things forever for as long as you live. Well, the issue with that, funding a policy forever till death do us part, the issue with that is you're, you're paying additional costs to do that. Whereas if you were to look at yourself, evaluate yourself, what is my financial commitment levels? What is the likelihood of me, Denzel Rodriguez, funding a policy all the way up till death do us part? Like, what is the likelihood of us doing that? Let's just look at America as a whole, the average American citizen. What is the likelihood that the average American will continue to put money into an asset well after retirement? Not just a couple of years after, after retirement, we're talking 10, 15, 20 years after retirement. So the beauty with whole life insurance is that you're able to set that time frame, set the max amount of dollars that you would like to do, the amount of money you know you can do, right? Within a time period for the least amount of insurance expense. And then when that period is done, say it's 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40, years, whatever it is, when the period is done, you can do what's called a reduced paid up option, which totally eliminates all the cost of insurance. And now you're just left with the cash value growing at a guaranteed rate of return, as well as your death benefit is also growing with that. And so now you have this tax-free line of credit that you can borrow against and use to continue to accumulate assets well after retirement years. Not bad at all. So this cannot be done with an index universal life insurance policy because you can never fully be paid up with an index universal life insurance policy. So I just wanna provide that transparency there. If you're looking at the infinite banking concept, the strategy itself, um, you may wanna tweak your strategy if you're gonna be using an IUL and you wanna be aware that you'll never stop paying for the IUL. The moment you stop paying is when you die, right? Versus whole life, you pay for a set period of time then you can completely remove the costs altogether and you can continue to practice the infinite banking concept with no cost, right? And that's just one policy. You can do this multiple times over and over again. And this is another reason why I like getting those numbers of what you can do, not what the agent is telling you you should do, and not even me, right? I'm an agent, I'm licensed. I don't wanna tell you what you should do. I wanna show you options, but what I would, I believe, and I'm open to learning and growing along the way, but I think it would be most effective to figure out what it is that you can do according to your financial commitment levels, the likelihood of you paying in a hundred grand for 10 years or 50 grand for 10 years, 20 years, 40 years, right? Imagine 50 grand for 40 years. What's the likelihood of you doing that? Do you have a track record to prove that, that you've been saving for 15 years? You know, you've been investing for 20 years. Like if you got a track record of discipline, then I'll feel definitely more comfortable as an agent writing you a, a, a policy where it's going to give us the ability to put a, a ton of money into it, right? So there's a couple different ways of looking at it. You could say, I want to put in as much money as humanly possible for as long as humanly possible. Great. Let's design it for that. But then if you're like, ah, I don't know, this is new for me, infinite banking for my first policy starting out, just want to fund it for this amount for this period of time, but I want to maximize the cash value performance on the dollars that I'm putting in, this would be an example of that, right? So let's come back to the board. Quick recap, 7,250 a year going in for 14 years, total amount principal dollars that we can pay in for those 14 years, $101,500. We start off at around 6,000 6, plus year one, right? MEC limit, $7,500, death benefit, 278, base premium, 826. Okay, by year 14, the cash value 
will be around this number, 125,218 death benefit would have increased to 642,217. Here is a, a, a major benefit here. You put a policy on your kids while they're young, according to this philosophy, this type of a concept, understand that you don't only get the benefit of the, of the living feature, which is the thing you care most about, but also understand your, your son, daughter, you got them when they were 17, when they're 30, let's say their health declined, right? No matter what, the older we get, no matter how healthy you are, the older we get, the more expensive insurance, life insurance becomes, no matter what. IUL, whole life, term, no matter what, it's gonna keep getting more and more expensive. So the fact that we're locking in the death benefit starting off at a little over a quarter million, and with this particular strategy, that when you focus on cash value accumulation and growth, minimizing the expense, the death benefit starts to compound as, along with the cash value because the cash value can never exceed the death benefit. If it were to do that, then that's the whole thing about the policy becomes a mech and then it is it becomes a qualified retirement plan essentially where you could be taxed or you will be taxed, right? There's a penalty fee on the growth. And so to avoid all of that, you set it up in, a, in such a way where the MEC limit, according to what your funding never breaches, and you get this benefit of the cash of the death benefit constantly increasing, right? So that's just within 14 years. Now look at, at age 50, cash value grew to 287,000, right? Death benefit 707. This is assuming that by year 14, we did a reduced paid up option. The death benefit will be significantly more if we kept paying in to the policy after year 14, right? Even if we were to just pay in, say, the base premium, right? The minimum insurance expense for the next, you know, well after 14 years, all the way through years, the 20, 30s, 40s, 50s, if they just kept paying the base premium, the, the cash value will also grow way more and so will the death benefit, right? So pretty, pretty interesting in terms of just the numbers, what we're looking at, what they're trying to do, what we're getting ready to put in place. And then we have to talk about the options, the strategy options. What are we going to do once the policy is in place? You know, half the battle, I believe, is getting your numbers in line, finding the right insurance agent, finding the right design for you, right? Funding it. Once you got it all set up, great. Now we have to attract, attach a strategy to it because the policy alone, if all you did was just save your money in cash value life insurance, that's not a legitimate or I should say a, a fully complete financial plan. You just got half of it, right? So don't expect to become a millionaire. Don't expect to create generational and an infinite amount of wealth. I get the name infinite banking, but there's more to it, right? You, you got the infinite down by setting up the account, funding it, saving it more effectively. You're gonna increase your yield and all that stuff, and that's great. And yeah, you know, that death benefit does allow for uh, that generational wealth, I get that part. But while you're living, we need to talk about the banking part of it, and that's the strategy, right? The banking part of it is the strategy. So in this case, very simply, we are redirecting savings, emergency funds, sinking funds, right? And the result of just doing that, obviously we get that tax-free growth, higher yield than a money market account, savings account, checking account, uh, accounts that the CD accounts that the bank offers us, we're getting a higher yield and that yield is has that tax-free protection. Also getting that death benefit protection, wealth preservation, right? Asset protection overall, money stored in cash value life insurance, um, creditors can't go after it, right? If you were to file bankruptcy or in a, in a tough situation, if you were to get sued, they can't come after it, right? So you have that layer of protection there as opposed to a, a standard savings or checking account, right? Now, after, um, say, a few years of really building up the cash value, because I wouldn't recommend you go and just start borrowing it right away without a legitimate strategy, because again, this is for his son. So he's just simply saving money. It's technically for his son later on. Now, he does have the right because he's the policy owner. He can do whatever he want, wants with the cash value. Uh, if I was in this situation, I personally, because it's a couple dollars, uh, really, you know, seven grand, not a whole lot of money, not a whole lot of capital to work with. I personally would just let it build up for a few years 
and we can borrow from the cash value after it's built up a little bit to maybe help son build a biz maybe help son finance his first car right maybe he has a car already i don't know but let's say he doesn't right and so maybe by age 19 or 20 maybe he could be using mom and dad's car temporarily grind around um or at some point he could finance his own vehicle right where he can pull a portion from the cash value as down payment if he was to buy a car finance it or lease it he can pull from here to lease a car and then he could pay dad back into the policy and so he pays dad dad pays the policy that's pretty cool that is a that's a banking so he's the son instead of going to bank of america wells fargo instead of going to another bank he can go to his father's bank which is really his the son's bank but the father is, is funding it initially, so it's pretty cool. So son here and say dad is here. So dad provides a loan, son receives it, and we'll put the policy here, Let's see if this makes sense. Son pays dad, right? So dad writes up a loan. Hey, you're gonna loan from the bank of their, their last name. Um, I'm not gonna say their last name, but bank of dad borrows from the cash value gives it to son son goes and gets a car say he leases and now son is going to make payments boom back to dad dad pays the policy over time so that's an option that's pretty cool meanwhile the policy is earning interest right son has the capital up front from that money he gave him to pay the the dealership right pay the dealership because you have to pay the lease payments right so he's paying it from from this capital the borrowed funds up front and then son is making payments back to dad so that's that'll feel like two payments but it's really not so hope i didn't confuse you with that this is all a learning process for me as well these are just ideas that are running but um in a, in a simpler option some other options is uh education college right to help pay off student loans could do that down the line investments a lot of different things that we can go about in terms of when you're the parent you're saving money for your child right as they grow cash value grows that money grows you can use it for yourself personal use for the first few years let's say you then pay it back right as it you can be teaching your son or daughter these strategies get them involved and then they they start working and they say okay dad i want to participate and i want to add some money into it i want to save two thousand dollars so now you're getting two thousand dollars from the son dad knows he can pay uh, three grand a year so the total is five dad starts making more money he can put more money into it right so really cool stuff a lot of a lot of cool ways of looking at this so i hope that was helpful hope i didn't get you all confused because i know i was somewhat confusing myself there in terms of borrowing from a policy to say finance a vehicle um, and setting up that relationship i think is very important when you're working with your children to really educate them on the value of borrowing from within the family rather than going to a bank and paying high interest rates right amortized rates when you borrow from within your household, your own banking system. Yes, you're still paying interest. Understand the interest that you pay to the insurance company, you're also earning money on the cash value itself. So that is helping create an offsetting effect, right? And if we were doing an investment, that's that also helps with offsetting even more than when you finance something, right? Financing is cool, I'm not totally against it, you know, I don't particularly practice it as much. I, I tried it for myself, uh, running bills and expenses, even taxes. Um, it absolutely works. The results, in my opinion, are, are not as, obviously not as advantageous as simply investing your money to increase cash flow, to increase your income. So two different ways of looking at it, right? You can simply use infinite banking to recapture expenses, taxes, uh, finance cars i mean you name it and i guess when you look at it over a long period of time there's a difference without a doubt 
kind of bringing all those interest rates back to you, right? And then whatever you pay an in interest to the insurance company, understand that that's helping you receive more dividends on the back end on your cash value later on, right? So by no means are you paying yourself an interest rate, right? Maybe in some other videos, I messed that up. This is me learning, being vulnerable. I might have said pay yourself interest. I don't think I ever said it, but if I did, right, because I make a ton of videos, if I did, that is me correcting myself now in this video in 2022, as I'm recording this in uh, in June, uh, July of 2022, is you're not paying yourself interest. You're paying the insurance company interest when you borrow against the cash value. Simultaneously, you're earning an interest rate similar to what you pay in interest. Some cases, identical, so it creates this offsetting effect. And then whatever we did with the money that got borrowed, that should create a higher net return or savings than whatever you pay to borrow, hence offsetting your borrowing costs. And that is an element of velocity banking as well. Borrowing from here to pay here, where when you borrow from here, it didn't cost you anything. All right, if I can borrow a million dollars at 0%, I do that all day, all day, every day, and then just create a higher yield to then pay back that debt. If it's on a particular 0% uh, interest period, you know, and then when it expires, I have the, the net million plus whatever I earned, right? So my name is Denzel Rodriguez, your personal finance geek of the 21st century. On this YouTube channel, we cover the velocity banking concept, infinite banking, and kingdom authority. This video went over infinite banking. If you're ready to take action, get your policy designed, talk to an insurance agent, got a link below in the description talking about, you know, ready to get started on your cash value life insurance policy. I'll also put it in the comments below. You can reach out to IBC Global. Steve Parisi is the owner. Um, they have wonderful agents there like Steve, Phil, Samantha, uh, Brandon. Uh, these are agents that are in the weeds day in and day out, helping all of most of or all of my clients really get their policies in place for infinite banking. Uh, if you work with me directly, you're most likely a one to one client of mine, coaching client where we're not just putting policies in place for you, but we're also looking at the whole financial picture, right? So you can think of me as your financial coach, your financial consulting, your financial strategist, in addition to having uh, the team of IBC Global, it's a group of insurance agents and insurance agency to help put these policies in place for you, for you yourself, right? Wife, husband, kids, even mom and dad, right? We can go on nieces, nephews. I mean, we can we can insure everybody at some point in time. That's really the I would say in my household, that's my goal. Insure everybody, right? Have all these little banks building over time. And that's what helps that wealth generation. I mean, perpetuate itself for multiple generations to come. So I'm going to stop talking. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a wonderful day. God bless. And we'll be talking soon.